the use of english as the medium of instruction emi in higher education around the world has grown exponentially over the last 10 years to examine the phenomena, in 2020, the British Council brought together a team of leading UK academics to examine research in this area and publish their findings as the English in Higher Education, English Medium Literature Review. The review covers a wide range of topics. So let's look at some of its key findings, beginning with the definition of EMI. There are a variety of definitions out there. This one captures the key components of EMI. The use of the English language to teach academic subjects, other than English itself, in countries or jurisdictions where the first language of the majority of the population is not English. EMI has become a symbol of internationalism through recruitment of international students, international staff mobility, the growth in transnational education, and internationalization of the curriculum. The relationship, however, between English and internationalization is complex, with EMI simultaneously a driver of reaction to an outcome of internationalization. As well as internationalism, the review examines the links between EMI and other perceived benefits such as increased international student income, increased global attractiveness, increased university rankings, the development of English language competencies, employability and access to teaching materials. There is no doubt that while these drive the spread of English medium, there is a lack of evidence to claim these as actual benefits. The review highlights the diversity of EMI implementation models not just across countries, but also within a country's institutions. These models are influenced by history and politics, policy and the English levels of students and staff and the curriculum. Examination of what constitutes student success on English medium programmes found English language proficiency to be a key factor, alongside other factors such as perceived success and self-belief. As well as success, the review also looks at the challenges for students, lecturers and administrative staff. Challenges related to language, culture, organization, the institution, teaching and learning materials and implementation are common themes in research. Of these themes, language-related challenges are perhaps the most evidenced. These include Problems with benchmarking and describing the threshold needed to teach or learn through English. Problems with gaps or mismatches in content, lecturer and student language proficiency. Pedagogical challenges and challenges with academic skills when studying or teaching in English. EMI has been criticised for contributing to the Englishization of higher education. To counter this, some argue for EMI policies and implementation that embrace multilingualism and multiculturalism. Studies have shown first language is frequently used in EMI classrooms, mainly to clarify content, and that first language use is generally viewed as a useful resource by students and content lecturers. However, some feel it could exclude international students or violate policy. More research is needed to evaluate the effectiveness of first language use in the classroom and how language-aware pedagogical practice can be incorporated into lecturer training. The final sections of the review focus on quality assurance and support structures for students and content lecturers. Existing quality assurance frameworks were found to be relatively new and not tried and tested, so more research is needed on their efficacy. Research into the core principles of the design and implementation of support systems for content lecturers and students found they need to be content specific, be based on needs analysis, address the challenges faced. For students this means addressing language, communication, intercultural and effective challenges. For lecturers this means addressing language and pedagogical challenges and challenges in dealing with the culturally and linguistically diverse student groups. Institutional student support can come in a variety of models and forms. A key consideration is when, 
and how support is provided and by whom. Components of a support system may include English for academic purposes, English for specific purposes and strategy training, including coping strategies. To review pedagogy, language and communication as areas to be addressed highlights the need for integrated lecturer support, reflective practice and cooperation between content and language specialists and provides an overview of initiatives by the wider education sector. To end, let's summarise what the review reveals overall. It shows that EMI in higher education is widespread and highly complex. Implementation, however, outstrips research and there are still large gaps in systematic or comparable data. In order to enable evidence-based policy, planning and implementation, more research is needed in key areas of understanding current EMI policy and practice, first language use and multilingualism in EMI context, needs analysis, critical skills and support structures for students and content lecturers. Make sure you take the time to read the review and if you want to learn more about EMI, Check out our global research output on English language in HE on BritishCouncil.org.